it's showtime. I love that comment. I just think that's awesome. So uh, one of these days I'll get over being so amazed by that. So I'm going to let the uh, uh, let the audience build here for just a second. There's a couple of things I want to pull into this platform. So I'm going to do them right now while we give folks a minute. Make sure that you have told StreamYard that you want me to be able to see your comments. Otherwise, I won't. And so you'll make sure that make sure that you've given StreamYard permission. I can't remember. I think we've gone live in this group a time or two before. So some of you, I'm sh pretty sure, have already done that. Uh, pretty sure have already connected with me on my profile to do that. So that's fine. That's good. Uh, that's what I want you to do. Uh, that'll make it easy for everybody. So um, I don't know how this is going to work for a webinar platform. I'm trying it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make. We're going to make the best of it. So. <clears throat> It moved around here, so uh, the light's in the right spot. I will um, uh, give me just a second. There's a couple of things I want to I want to grab. I'll bring them in here. Uh, if I had a really really cool video to play and all that kind of cool stuff, I don't, so uh, I won't be doing that. Um, but give me just a second here, and I'll get I'll get ready. Let's see. I'm trying a couple of things I have not done before. So as soon as you come on, be sure to announce yourself. That way I know you're here and we'll be able to uh, make this really a good experience for everybody. I'll start out with just my picture here and uh, we'll be able to jump in. So hello, Larry. Let's see. Uh, I know Steve is going to try to join us. I'm hoping Steve will be able to get in. Um, this is a really, really important webinar and I'm really excited about being able to uh, be able, being able to provide it. Uh, Arnie, thank you for your your attention earlier. Um, yes, I realized that I had posted that on the wrong day. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is that I've got things scheduled on Friday, uh, which I thought was going to take my time on Thursday night. And uh, Friday is my birthday, and Friday we've got webinars all day Friday. And yes, I am kind of busy uh, at the present moment. Uh, Seems like that's always true in the summertime. And um, and I've got something greasy all over my face. So. Yes, uh, we'll uh, we'll do that. So tonight will be the webinar inside of Designer, um, and right now is the one inside of Thunderbird. So uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be old as of officially. No, I've been doing that for a long time. So <laughs> nothing's new. Uh, nothing changes. Just have another one of those trips around the sun, for which I'm very very thankful, by the way, uh, given the kind of the year that I've had the last couple of years. So I'm really just glad. Glad to be here. Glad to be able to be available and do things like this. So let's start this thing today. I, like I said, I don't know what kind of response we're going to have. I don't know how this whole just being able to post this in the group is going to go. Uh, it's kind of a new experience. And so we'll check it out. We'll see how it works. And uh, I may abandon this StreamYard as a webinar platform. I don't know yet. I'm just still making decisions about that. I love StreamYard. It's a great way to go live in a group or on a page or, or something like that. It's a great way to record video and be able to have an interaction and all of that. Um, has a totally different experience than, than uh, Demio, which I've done probably somewhere close to 300 webinars on it. And it is a very different experience than um, it is a very different experience. I know what that is. I'll talk about that in just a second. Um, it is a very different experience than um, than using Zoom. Uh, Zoom allows more interaction, uh, and this is going to be a little bit different kind of a platform. We'll see how it works. Uh, won't be able to see comments unless we're in this one group, so I, we'll just see. I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. I'm hoping that it does. I hope it works really, really well. I want to talk about the story because, as I said in my bucket talks this morning, which, by the way, is one of the longer bucket talks I ever do, I try to keep that to under 13 minutes. Today, I topped right at 15, uh, which is a little bit out of the ordinary for me. I'm also going to take um, the notes from this morning. I have transcribed them. That's one of the things we're going to talk about in the process here. I've transcribed those notes from this morning, or I've transcribed that, that video from this morning. And turned it into an ebook. It's about a 2,000 word ebook, uh, which is somewhere in the neighborhood of about 11 of those 15 minutes actually became usable and valuable content that with a little bit of massaging, I was able to turn that into a pretty, pretty decent uh, little ebook covering the topic from this morning. And I'm going to cover that just a little bit today in this webinar um, in a little bit greater detail. 
And again, one of those refinements of, of how you take that across the process there. So let's do this. I'm going to give you the notes. We're going to take a look at the notes here. And uh, I'm going to pop this up right now. This is actually, uh, I'm calling this my streamer for publishing notes. And uh, nothing really sexy about that name, but that's okay. Um, what we're going to do right now is find those notes because uh, they're floating around here someplace right there. There we go. And I took this, this quote right here is from a group called Marketing Insiders Group. And I, I really liked the comment. And I'm going to go through this. I want you to see some of the things that are here uh, that will, will really help you to understand the struggle that we have frequently. Let me see. Let me get this in the way. There, that's what I was looking for. Uh, some of the struggle that we have when, when we talk about content. Brands face multiple uh, obstacles when organizing the content function. First of all, could you make that sentence more complicated? That's issue number one. They must grapple with content proliferation, inconsistent and uncoordinated content creation, the lack of strategic direction in the content insights process, and the difficulty for consumers, customers, and prospects to find content that is relevant and timely. Now, I really like that paragraph. And when you break it down into its finest points, uh, there is some amazing information there. Later in that article, we also have a strategy that's presented. And this is the five point strategy. I promise you, I'm going someplace with this. Clearly identify KPI aligned with the business mission. I want you to see what this strategy is. This is the methodical approach suggested by the author of this. This is the methodical approach. Clearly identify KPIs aligned with the business mission. Number two, identify the metrics that will work as a unit to tell a value story. Number three, identify the sources of those metrics and pull into a dashboard using connections. Number four, a, a create a logarithm that that uh, algorithm that allows that weights each metric in relation to their importance to the story. And number five, performing and non-performing metrics for each KPI on a periodic basis and use to collaborate or calibrate approach. This is the problem, people. The problem is real simple. You put things out in terms that are not simple. It's the problem. The, the reason why people struggle, people, in, 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 however you define the people, how the audience itself, the reason why the audience struggles is because there's not clarity in the communication of the content. This is an article addressing the biggest content challenges of 2020. And when I read the stuff that's in it, as valuable as it is, it has to be reworded in order to make any sense at all. Do you understand what I'm talking about when I do this? Do you understand the value of that? Let me know. Give me a comment because I want to see if we're going to be able to do this. But let me know. Does that make sense? Do you see the challenge that we have here? By not clearly communicating the content, we leave people wondering and looking for more. The way you build an audience, that's where we're headed with this. The way you build an audience is real simple. The way you build an audience is you, you, you eliminate from them the need to think about what you said and instead of think about the implementation of what you said. I'm reading this content right here wondering, okay, how can I communicate this so that it makes sense to my audience? because it doesn't. I mean, nobody uses terms like KPI unless you're in the corporate world. Nobody uses terms like metrics that will work to tell a value story unless you're in the content communication world. Pull into a dashboard using connections? All right. This is where we're going. Let me put that in simple terms for you. I've rewritten those five points. I could have taken this from anything. I could have taken a job, uh, um, a, 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 an employment requirement, or I could have taken a job description and done exactly the same thing. But because today's webinar is on content creation, I thought it would be important to show you from the people who are talking about the challenges of content creation, 
why they're part of the problem, not part of the solution. So here are those same five points. I actually took exactly one of those five points, communicated them in the simplest terms possible, because everything should be made simpler, according to Albert Einstein, guy knew a thing or two. And if you're going to make it simpler, don't make it simpler than it should be, but make it simple enough that people can understand it. Let's see if I can get this so I can see your comments at the same time. Slide this over just a little bit so I can see what's going on here. Little adjustment. I'm not used to using these tools, but I'm working on it. So here we go. These are the five things that Eric rewrote these five points, and here's what they are. What's your purpose for the content, and how does that align with your business? That's what's being said in number one. Identify the KPIs aligned with the business mission. What's the purpose for your content? See, if I don't know where I'm going, then I can randomly write crap all day long, and it doesn't go anyplace. What's the purpose for the content? And how does it align with your business mission? Everything I write is for the sole purpose of making whatever it is I'm writing about simpler than it was when you found it. Number two, what is the what in the story is essential to move someone to a decision? Is there something in that story that's going to cause them to say yes? And if there is, what is it that they're going to be saying yes to? And how do we get them to that point? That's the I, that's the metrics that need to be identified uh, that will work as a unit to tell a value story. Listen, everything, everything. One of the reasons why I do webinars is because I think it's a great way to communicate. One of the reasons why I do live feeds is because I think it's a great way to communicate. Now, I'm, I, I've taken my live feed from this morning in the form of a video. And it will be posted on my YouTube channel. So it'll stay in it as a video. But one of the purposes of that is so that we might do the next thing. And the next thing is I'm going to take that and put it in a written form. I'm going to share that as a blog post. I'm going to share it on, 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 a, uh, on a content channel like Medium or, or, or uh, uh, Spokio or some, some place where I can share that content somewhere else. Some people are going to hear it in video. Some people are going to hear it in audio. It's going to go on SoundCloud. It's going to go on my podcast. But it's going to be a unified whole. What's the story? What in the story is essential to move people to a decision? Here's the key. If people can listen and say, Eric, you made that simple. I said, guess what? I can make a lot of other things simple for you, too. And that's my goal. That's my point. That's my purpose. That is the essential part of the story is that I make it simple. That's why I don't like to make things complicated. That's why I don't have fancy video introductions and, and music playing and, and lights and stuff going on in the background because I want to make it simple. Life has to be simple for people to know what action to take next. Number three, track when you will use that part of the story and on what channel. I know where my live feeds are going to go. I know what I'm going to do with the live feed when I'm done. I know where I'm going to put it on my channels. I know what channels I'm going to put that on. And they're part of a whole. Oftentimes, you'll hear me, and, and, and those of you who are watching this have heard me on various platforms, various channels. I usually talk about the same thing for a week. Well, talking about the same thing for a week isn't a lazy way to go. It is a very deliberate way to go. I know exactly what I'm going, what part of the story I'm going to tell. And I know what channel I'm going to tell that on. For example, today, I took the notes from this morning. I edited them. I'm going to show you editing tools in just a minute. And in the process of editing that, I have created an ebook from it. I'll give you an ebook for attending the webinar today. And that is to help you to move to the next level. And all of that's intended to walk people through a process that makes sense. Number four, the number four that was created in the, in the uh, what are the challenges? Create a, a, an algorithm that weighs each metric in relation to their importance to the story. In other words, just test your responsiveness. Find out what people like and what they don't. Find out what people like and what they don't. Test the responsiveness. 
what do people respond to? I went back and looked at, at, at the videos that I've done, uh, live feed videos I've done over the last several years. That's an interesting challenge. Uh, but Facebook history puts them back in my face every uh, on that same anniversary date every year. So every day, Facebook is telling me for the last three or four years, you did this video and you did this video and you did this video and you did this video. Now, how many of those got shared? How many views? How many likes? How, how, how many comments? Those kinds of things. I've had some things where I've had the comments or have exceeded the number of views. That's pretty cool. I've had other things where the number of shares blew my mind. And they always fall in certain categories. I'm testing the responsiveness. Instead of saying create an algorithm that, that weighs each metric in relation to the importance to the story, just test the responsiveness. Interestingly enough, I've noticed that over a three-year period of time, the same topic will come up every year at the same time. And you know why? There's certain things that trigger. There's certain elements that trigger that. There's certain things that I think about at certain times of the year. Um, I made this boneheaded mistake of, of, of posting something that will be tonight, uh, which is typically on Thursday, but I've moved it to Wednesday. There's a couple of reasons why I moved it there. One of them is I have a birthday. Well, these are there's two things that I do every, I've done year for years and years and years. Going clear back to when I was teaching school, I talk about the same thing. I talk about two things. The, the, the joy that I have as a believer in Jesus Christ of being born on this side of the cross. And second, being born in this country. Because my birthday is the day before Independence Day. Those two things always go together. So those become a theme of something that I write about every single year. That same occurrence comes up every year. Does that make sense to everybody? You understand why you say, okay, there's certain things that always come up at, at, at certain times. That's the reason. That's the reason for that. Now, let me give you the fourth one or the fifth one. Um, fifth one, they said analyze performing and non-performing metrics for each KPI on a periodic basis and use that to calibrate your approach. Put in simple terms, do more of what works and less of what doesn't. Which one of the two are easier to follow? This is a test. Which one of those two things are easier to follow? This one up here or this one down here? Because the truth is they say exactly the same thing. They say exactly the same thing. Larry, I agree. It, it doesn't make you sound smarter. Listen, I have a statement that I've used to guide me for a long, long time. Don't baffle people with your brilliance. Stump them with your simplicity. They even had t-shirts made with that on it. Don't baffle people with your brilliance. Stump them with your simplicity. Because you want people to be able to take action. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. Let's get, let's, let's, let's go continue with our notes. All right. The issues are the same. The issues that of, of a giant company and the issues of a tiny company, even if that's just one person, even if that's hidden forge, there is the issues and the challenges are exactly the same. That is to build an audience that will respond when you ask them to. It's always the same. You do exactly the same thing. But the budgets are different. Does that make sense? So the issues are the same, but the budgets are different. Here is what I think is a little bit better direction. Your content needs to be published frequently. This is easy to follow. Publish frequently based upon the buyer's journey and mapped to certain keywords that are related to your business. That's easy to follow. That's something that's easy for people to be able to get a hold of and they can make that make sense, okay? Now, here's what you have to do if you're going to be successful in creating content. Number one, you have to ignore the fast one-click content creation processes. I got inundated over the last two weeks with dozens and dozens of email saying, we've created this point and key click keyword. Uh, uh, you insert a keyword and it'll spit out an article for you. 
yeah, and it's going to sound like everybody else's does, and it's going to sound like it's uh, automatically generated by an AI. Listen, your story is yours, and it has to have your voice, and it has to have your slant, and it has to have your stuff. Otherwise, it just contributes to the noise that goes on on the internet, and it ends up looking like this mess does right here instead of like this does right here. And here's the key. I could easily have entered those keywords in and generated an article on every one of these five things, but it would not have sounded like it was me. It would have sounded like it was somebody else. And if I had done that, I would have appeared to my audience as a phony and a fake. You're not going to build trust with an audience if you're a phony and you're a fake. So you have to avoid, and I'm serious at almost any cost, you have to avoid the junk that's being sold to you regardless of the price, promising you that you can create amazing content with one click of a mouse because you can't. You can't. It ends up sounding like a mouthful of keywords, not like something that's going to be appealing to other people. The only people who benefit from this kind of stuff right here are the people who are selling it to you. And I promise you, they're not using it themselves. I love Seth Godin. I really do because Seth kind of views things in a similar way that I do. He thinks it ought to be easy. He's, I, I, I'm sorry. He thinks it ought to be made simple. I, I, I like what he says here. This is a brand new, this is a brand new program for him. Uh, he just started a podcast not too long ago. And this is what Seth says. Seth's one of the marketing gurus in the world. And the reason why I follow him is because he doesn't pretend that it's one point click simple. What he said is this, you need to play a different game and your game is slow and steady, slow and steady. I once had my live feed audience built up to almost 300 people would watch me on any given day. And then um, somebody made a few comments that were very, very politically motivated and Facebook boom, bammed me the next day. My audience was six. I went from 300 to six. Killed me. Now, I, that's okay. I, I shifted gears and did something a little bit different. But understand this, that building that audience back up has been slow and steady. It took me a while to do it to begin with. It'll take me a while to do it again. But now I'm doing, I'm using, I'm incorporating other tools into that. But if you're going to be a storyteller, and, and, and honestly, content is, and one of the things I love about Seth Godin is he says this, content marketing is the only marketing that there really is. Everything else is hype. And I, I, I believe that, and I believe that we need to play that game. So let me show you what his strategy is. It's really simple. This, this strategy right here looks so much different than this mess up here. This is Seth's strategy. Create something different and great for a small group of people. Create something great and something different that benefits a small group of people. I would much rather have 10 people on a webinar than 100 that don't give a flying flip. Both of you that are watching right now that I can see have heard me say over and over again, don't bother me in the middle of my webinar about a replay. Because if you're asking about a replay, you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. I want a small group of people who are going to pay careful attention to what I'm saying. You'll get more from the tone of the voice than if I show you where to click the mouse. I promise you. So here's what Seth says. Get in front of it. Get, uh, create something different and great for a small group of people. I'll... I, I, I'm fascinated by music. Alison Krauss has been my hero forever because Alison Krauss didn't jump into the music business to be a country music star. There's a gazillion of them. Instead, what she did was she focused her attention on bluegrass when nobody was focusing their attention on bluegrass and she dominated that market. 
small group of people. She created something different for a small group of people. And she became the best in the world at meeting the needs of that small group of people. And then number two, get out in front of just a few of those people. Get out in front of just a few of those people. Number three, engage, learn, and grow from the response. What do you find out in the process of doing that? The reason why I look at every live feed that I've done, every time it comes up in my Facebook history, and that's the great thing about Facebook history is that tell me one year later what the response was. I've now that's now soaked for a whole year. That thing that might have had um, 35 people watch it may end up with 350 people watch it after it sat around for a while. I may also discover that it got shared 12 times. I didn't think anybody was paying any attention. I'm learning and I'm growing from the response so that I might do more of what people respond to. To this day, the most popular live feed video that I've ever done was sitting in my driveway right out there inside of my pickup truck when the pickup truck still ran, uh, sitting inside of my pickup truck in the driveway. And I talked about your competition. Got shared more than a dozen times. Uh, got viewed up, up just short of a thousand times. It was extremely important. And I built my whole training program, a whole training program around that because I learned something from the response. And then Seth keeps this really simple. Just repeat the three steps above. Makes great sense. All right. This, by the way, is his is his little um, his new gig called the 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 uh, the story engine, which I find are really really cool. I call mine the content machine, but the story engine is pretty cool. All right, so this is just just kind of a rundown of my approach to content creation. Become singular in your approach. Become singular in your approach. My goal is exactly the same. I do not want to complicate anything. Instead, I want to take complex things and make them simple. So I'm very singular in that approach. If, it, if it's going to be too complicated, I'm not going to do it. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it down to its simplest points, and that's the way I'm going to provide it. The training, the coaching, and all of the things that I've done all of the years has always been what can be the simplest approach to that. So when I do content creation, my purpose for doing content creation is I'm singular in that approach. It's so that simple might make awesome easy. And I keep that in front of me. That is before my face all the time. It's the focus that I have because I know exactly, I know exactly what it is that I want my, I want the outcome to be. The outcome has to be to make it simple. I once had a conversation with two people at the same time online about um, about a, a, a major project that I was working on. And one person kept throwing these layers of complexity on top of it. And finally, I said, stop, time out. I don't need that. My goal is not to make this more complicated. My goal is to make it simple. So you have to become singular in your approach, which means for me, I, I, I have one platform. My one platform is Facebook Live. I think that platform may have to change over time. I don't know. If Facebook's getting such an ugly place to hang out. I don't know if I want to be there or not. But I, I, I've, I've mastered one thing. And when nobody else was doing Facebook Lives, I was doing Facebook Lives. And I've been doing that, them now for almost five years. It'll be five years in, in, in July. And so that made it easy for me to master the platform. And I wanted to make it very, very simple. Okay. Number two, create for yourself what you plan to create for others. Very important. I create content every single day, every day. Every day, I write something. I posted in the uh, Picasso group the other day, one of the groups that I, that I manage, I posted in the Picasso group the other day that you should write 200 words before you have breakfast. Simple goal, 200 words, not that much. 200 words is basically a page. 
Uh, I should be able to write a page of, of, of words before I have breakfast. And so that's kind of a simple goal for me. I set a goal over 10 years ago now, it's been almost 12 years ago, that I set a goal that what I would do is I would write three to 500 word article every single day and I would publish it. I would actually email it to a list. I had a list of had, had about 375 people on that list and I mailed it every single day, it mailed at 615. I had people who would hold their agency meetings at 630 so that they could get the, 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 uh, the email post that I had sent at 615. They were counting on it to come through. I had to be there. I had to make sure that I did that. I created for myself a, the same kind of path that I would create for somebody else. And I don't want to make it complicated. It has to be simple. Okay. Number three, pick a content path. Pick a content path. This isn't complicated. You want to do amazing things, pick a path for your content. Pick a very, very simple path for your content and stick on that path. For me, for me, that path was very simple. The path was to follow Facebook Live. And it, then that Facebook Live, then I transcribed that Facebook Live. And I have a text version of it. I do something with that text version. I may turn it into an ebook. I might turn it into a blog post. I might turn it into the description for the video. I put the video on YouTube. And notice in all of that, I'm not duplicating the effort. What I'm doing instead is I'm maximizing the effort. I picked a content path. For me, it's easier to talk. I've been presenting for my whole life. I started my very first presentation. One of my very first presentations before a large crowd was before the Kansas legislators as a 22-year-old kid lobbying for the Eastern Kansas Gas and Oil Association. You can check it out. That, that was important for me to do that. And so I've always been comfortable in front of an audience. And I can make that presentation in front of an audience. Not everybody can do that. Not everybody should. But for me, it's really easy because I take that live feed, which is a video. My also has an audio. And now I've got all these other things I can do with that. So it's, it starts with video. And then I can take that video and turn it into little tiny snippets that I can put on Medium or I can put them on a blog post or I can put them in other places or I can make them. I can even make that something that I can put on Pinterest. You know, I can, I can create a, a, a visual that goes with that put that on Pinterest and it can lead them to the next thing. But, but all of this is intended to build an audience and all of the purpose of building an audience is to create traffic. And the purpose of creating a traffic is so that you might be able to have buyers. Is that step clear? Does that process make sense? Do you understand why this whole thing of publishing and processing is so important? I don't know who made the comment that said uh, uh, Facebook user. You have to give you have to give StreamYard permission in order to do that. I love having you on. You're more than welcome to be on. I just can't tell who it is, so I'd like to give you credit for that. But thank you. I do completely agree. I don't like the negative vibrations. I don't like the negativity that goes on, and so therefore we want to try to make this positive. Okay. Um, you can even email. Occasionally, I'll take the snippets from the things I do on live feed and I'll put it in a in an email and email it to my list. And then number four on this content path, enjoy it. Enjoy the path. People who don't want to put in the effort aren't enjoying the path. They should really do something else. They should really do something else. Instead, enjoy the path. Enjoy the path. Make sure that you enjoy creating content. I enjoy creating content. I don't want a one click solution that spits out computer generated uh, artificial intelligence rendered keyword stuffed articles. Instead, I want my voice. I want something that sounds like Eric. I don't want it to sound like somebody else. Uh, so I'm going to pull up something here. Hang on just a second, because I think I closed that window before I went live. And uh, so give me just a second to see if I can grab this. But the most important thing you can do is start. The most important thing you can do is start.
Because if you don't start, I don't care what it is. You say, Eric, I'm not a very good writer. Doesn't matter, right? It's not hard. I made all my students, when I taught school, I made all my students every day write a one page paper. Every day, every day. Students that had me for four years, four years had to write a one page paper every day. And they had to write it in 15 minutes. First 15 minutes of every class was dedicated to writing. You say, why did you do that to your students? Because I wanted them to learn how to communicate. And I wanted them to learn how to communicate in written form because I feel like that in today's world, written form is extremely important. I know we have video. I know we have TikTok. I know we have Instagram. I know we have all of these other sexy platforms. But what people still consume is written. And you, if you can write well, you can do all of those other things. If you can write things, then you can do those other things. Then you have content for those other things. Interestingly enough, I always have notes. I never follow them, but I always write out the things that I'm going to talk about. What this is that you're seeing right here, what this is over here is my favorite tool. I'm going to talk about tools for just a second. It's my favorite tool. It's called Evernote. And I have notes in Evernote that go back to 2009. Uh, it's it's filled with stuff. When I save a, a snippet from a, a, a from a URL or from a blog post or from an article that I read someplace, I save it in Evernote because I can sort it and I can find it. I can put, bring it back. And now I have it. Uh, it becomes very valuable to me that way. And then I can also take notes. I can take notes on Evernote on my phone while I'm while I'm cruising around doing whatever it is that I do. Uh, while I'm fishing with my grandson, I can take notes on Evernote. Uh, I'm never without some place where I've got I can put stuff, and I need to be able to put stock so that I can pull it back up later. And I save it by keyword, and save it saving it by keyword makes it really easy. I'm gonna do an entire video series on Evernote. Um, I've been beta testing their latest version. Uh, it's now become permanent. Um, they've they've saved all of those things, and so now that I've been able to explore all of that, gone through the beta testing of it, uh, I love it, and I'm gonna be able to share that with you all later at a later date but this is where this is where i actually have the notes for today's for today's um for today's presentation so give me just a second i'll pop this uh google docs out so you can see this where we're going right here you, do you see this what i want you to see right here is that i use google docs to write now some people use uh, Word, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with Word. Word's a fine tool. I use Google Docs because I can access it from a from a hotel someplace. I can I, or whatever I need to do. I don't have to have it on my on my on my computer. I can actually access it from other places. And for me, that's very appealing. The other thing is I can use the share link right here to be able to import that into uh, Designer. And so I use Word now. Uh, I did actually purchase that, Arnie. You'd be proud of me, but. Um, but I use the tools that are available as add-ons in Google Docs. And th this is one of them. This tool I used, I actually just took the transcription of the live feed that I did earlier. Uh, transcription of that. And I transcribed it. I grabbed just the text. And I pulled that text over and I dropped it into Google Docs. When I did that, notice this number right here. Can you see that number? I don't know if you can see that real well or not, but that little number right there, let's see if I can get this so it's easier for you to see. This little number right here is 102. That's 102 grammatical mistakes were made. And the reason is very simple. I talk on in run on sentences, as does everybody else. And because I talk in round sentences, it's going to identify a whole bunch of things in my transcription that are junk, right? Now, the very first time I ever saw anything written in red on something that I wrote, it embarrassed me. I never liked to be corrected. I made really good grades in school. I never worked at it. Things were very easy for me. And I, now I see 102 mistakes, but there were mistakes I would have corrected anyhow. So I have this up, pull out the 102 mistakes. Then notice what happens after about 20 minutes of editing that 20 minute video or that 15 minute video. I have 10. I have 10. Um, and those 10 
are going to stay because those 10 are uniquely me. I still want this to have my voice, right? I still want it to have my voice. I still want it to sound like Eric said it because I did. I just don't want it to look like this where the saying of it becomes offensive to other people because there's nobody talks like that. We talk some wrong and say, can, do you know what a period is? Can you use a comma? I don't want that. Does that make sense to you? Do you understand what we're saying? I need you to respond back to me just a little bit. All right. Maybe you can't respond back. But I want to be able to do that without changing my voice, and that becomes the key. So that's the notes that I have for this publishing part. Now, let me give you a couple of more things, and we'll be finished, okay? Let me pop over here. Oops, I'm sorry. That wasn't what I, how I wanted to do that. Stop sharing that screen. And let me share a different screen. That's what I wanted to do. Um, All right, this is my Google Docs document. This is my Google Docs document. And, um, and, and this is after I have gone through, I made the edits to it. So I went through and made the edits. I'm going to give you the, the raw copy of that here in just a second. And uh, I'll put that down below. Let me... Um, Let's see if I've got this. I do not have that in a um, in a hosted site, so I will have to put it in a hosted site, and I'll drop it in the comments when we finish. But this was really easy to do. Now I have. Let's take a look at that document um, because I have now. I noticed because in my notes I have. Um, I have here the importance of the story. My my live feed this morning was divided into two sections. One was the importance of the story, and the other one was four essential elements that you needed to have, or four essential reasons that you needed to have for telling the story to begin with. Because I, I can't stay, I have a friend who, every time you're talking about something, he'll go, that's just like, and then he starts to talk and you go, that's just like nothing we were talking about. Where did you come up with that at? What it is, is he just wants to be able to interrupt and insert something. That's not the kind of person that you want to hang out with. His stories don't bring any value to the conversation. Understand? So, <clears throat> but I have now, I can take that section let me do this because this will make it easier for me to read this, okay? I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing the screen this afternoon. So let me grab all of that. I'm going to make this a lot bigger so it's easier for me to read. Let me ask you this. Would this title right here make a good blog post? Would that title make a good blog post? Anybody able to respond? Do you think that title would make a good blog post? So I can take the first half of that and create a blog post, right? If that would make a good blog post, I can take the first half of that and make a blog post out of it. And then I come down here and I look for other things, okay? And about this, okay? So we just go down through this and take a look at it. What about this? I don't have a story. People tell me that all the time. I don't have a story. I, 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 yeah, you do. You, you just don't know what it is. Now, the reason why I call this, let me give you a little insight here. The reason why I call this the powwow, I'm not trying to be offensive to American Indians. I'm not, happen to be one. Um, yeah, in, in fact, uh, my grandmother told me this, and this is the reason why I like to use the Indian slant, okay? 
reason why I like to use that little slant there is because this is what my grand grandmother told me when I was 12. She died the year I was 12. And she said the most amazing thing. She said, Eric, when you look at the history of the world, which I thought was a pretty good challenge in one day to look at the history of the world in this conversation. And she said, when you look at the history of the world, you have, you have the, 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 the communication falls into these categories. The European people of the world told their stories in written form. They had language and they had poetry and they had uh, the, the, they had written forms and written formats that they communicated their stories in. She said the people in the southern half of the, the world, Africa, South America, those places, communicated their stories through art. Oftentimes, the art was in the form of, uh, of, of all kinds of things, pictures, uh, clearly communicated pictures. The, the, the stories are told in sometimes in knots, sometimes it's in the thread, sometimes it's in the fabric. It, it, but, but they used those things to communicate their story. She said, but our people, people who were from here, we had storytellers. And the stories were communicated by the storytellers. And the stories were passed from one generation to the next by the storytellers. And the storytellers became great at being able to communicate the story of one generation to the next, one people to the next, one tribe to the next, one family to the next. And then she did the coolest thing she could have done. She said, Eric, you're the family storyteller. I was at that time, one of the youngest grandkids, there was two kids younger than me, a whole bunch of them that were older than me. Um, but she said, you are the family storyteller. And so my life's passion has been to tell a story. That's why I find it so offensive when somebody says, I don't have a story. What you're telling me is you don't have a history. You, you don't have a history to pass. And I know better than that. You've been here. <laughs> You've been down this road. You went down a road. And so you have a story. And this is for storytellers. Businesses have a story. Business owners have a story. The buyers at the store have a story. The consumers of the business have a story. People have a story. And tell me you don't have a story. Can I turn that into a blog post? But what do I do if I don't have a story? There's an answer to that question. You pay attention. You pay attention. Lots of things that you can take from this 15 minute webinar this morning or this 15 minute live feed this morning. And you can get from that all kinds of things that I can use in all kinds of places. So I don't have to do the same work over and over and over again. What I do instead is do it once and then repurpose it over and over and over again. The great Jay Conrad Levinson in the book. I don't think it's in the book. I think he just made the comment. Said that there are at least 52 different ways to repurpose your content. 52 different ways to tell your story. It might be a live stream. It might be in a video. It might be through pictures. It might be all kinds of things. But there's a place for the storyteller. And I think there's an amazing place for a storyteller connected to business. I think we have a huge business opportunity being able to tell people's story. I think we, those of us who represent a generation that is on the back half rather than the front half of our lives, I think we've got something we can share with the rest of the world. 
I'm so glad somebody said to me when I was 12, you, my son, are the storyteller because there's a story to be told. Don't let people tell you I don't have a story because they do. You may be able to help them to tell it. All right. Any other questions as we wrap up this afternoon before tonight's webinar? I will take questions. Or comments. I apologize for not having the uh, the um, uh, the ebook ready with this in it. I actually have it done. I just don't have it hosted any place. Anything else? If there's nothing else, then we're going to wrap this up. We're going to call it a, a, an afternoon. Uh, hopefully, this has been helpful to you. If so, I would love to hear your comments about that. Be sure and tell me what you thought was valuable. Tell me what you want more of. Tell me what you don't want more of. But help me to take the responsiveness that you have and use it to build additional things for people in the future. Okay, let's do that. Let's do it together. It will be very helpful if we can do that. Okay, thank you for joining me today. I look forward to talking to you whenever and wherever that is with the multiple places where I'll be the remainder of the week.